Hi there, and welcome back to the amazing collection unboxing. We are on box number 48, and I chose one that says Briar Clydesdale Stallions. This collector loved the drafters, so there should be some fun ones in here. Let's see what we got. Well, I can tell you our first one isn't a Clydesdale Stallion, it's a Clydesdale Mare, but that's okay, we'll forgive him. And this looks like it is the flocked special run Clydesdale mare back in the 1980s. Uh, Peter Stone met a guy named Mel Reigsicker. Oh, I've never seen one like this before. Um, who worked like at a Ford dealership or something, um, and on in his spare time made. I think, flocked models. It wasn't uncommon back in the day for hobbyists to paint and repaint and rehair horses. So, um, so him and Peter Stone got together and decided to do some Briar flocked models. So this is one of the first ones. This is the Clydesdale mare in flocked bay with little plastic flowers and her halter is actually separate, which is nice because it's in excellent condition. The leather on these halters tends to get a little brittle over the years. Um, I can't remember, I think this one was a, was a catalog run. He, they did a couple of catalog runs. There was sets where it was like the proud Arab stallion in a carriage and um, ride on a sunny day. There was a couple different ones and there was this one, there was a flocked proud Arabian stallion and they were in the Briar catalog so they are considered Briar products. Then Mel Reigsicker went to Sears, Pennies and Wards and said, hey I'm making these wonderful things, would you like to sell a few in your catalog? And they actually had quite a few in the Sears and Pennies and Wards catalogs over the years. I think 1984 was the beginning of this partnership and she's one of the first. She's in beautiful condition. It's very hard to keep flockies in good condition. Um, the flocking rubs off very easily and these little flower bobs get all um, bent and the hair gets very fluffy. Um, she is in beautiful condition and because she has her halter in a little baggie, it's still in perfect condition too. Mm -hmm. So this is a very nice set, very rare and hard to come by in that nice a condition. I don't think I've seen one with the mane and tail that nice. Usually they get very fluffy. So it's a nice start. I see bunches of Clydesdale Stallions. I'll start with this one. The Clydesdale Stallion mold was sculpted by Chris Hess and introduced in 1958. This is, there's there's aficionados who collect these and there are many mold changes over the years. So I'm just gonna have a few generic comments. This is the glossy dapple gray, the very original Clydesdale stallion mold when they were released in 58 had basically no muscling. He was just very smooth. Sometime in early 1960, 61, they went back and they added some um, muscling. So this is the muscled, glossy Clydesdale Stallion with gold bobs and a gold painted ribbon on his tail. Um, they did not paint the ribbon on his forehead, although he has one, except in one or two instances. Nice condition. The gloss is beautiful. He is very yellowed, so he definitely needs to sit in a sunny window for a while. And one ear is chipped. Other than that, nice condition. Like I said, I like this pattern. It's very lacy with very little gray showing. So the muscled glossy um, was made, so if they added the muscling in say 61, I think that they were only made until like 64, 65, 66. And then they switched to matte and the glossy got, uh, da gray dapple got discontinued. So the, the bays, and I see a couple in there, um, we'll get to talk a little more. So this wasn't produced for very long, very collectible, very pretty model, very nice paint job. Just needs to sit in a window for a little while. Um, so now let's see if I can pick the oldest. 
I can figure it out through the bubble wrap. Because like I said, I see a bunch of Bay Clydesdale stallions in there. This collector liked the drafters, so. Oh, this is a mat. So, let me pull some more out. Well, let me pull this guy out and see what we got at least. Another mat. Okay, interesting. So, we have two matte Clydesdale stallions with gold bobs. So, they were originally issued 58, no muscle, added the muscle 61-ish. 63, 64, they stopped doing the glossies. So these guys started in 64. They only had the gold bobs and the gold tail ribbon through about 1970 to 72. Now here's another thing, um, the mold mark. So the very, very early ones don't have a mold mark. So he has a mold mark. So like I said, like the 58, 59, 60s didn't have a mold mark. He has a mold mark, but no USA. And this guy has a mold mark and no USA. So these two are pretty similar, pretty similar paint jobs. They're both in nice condition. Um, no eye whites or anything else exciting, but they're a nice matched pair. So no glossy gold bobs. Um, was say 64 to 1970 to 72 because that era is when they started putting that USA on and then they started um, changing the bob colors so this one has the red and white bobs that came after the gold bobs so around 70 72 and again my years I'm not a I'm not a Clydesdale stallion aficionado but um, the red and white bobs came after the golds. He has the mold mark and the USA, so he is post 72. And they ran in bay with the red and white bobs through 1980 ish, 82, 84, somewhere in that time frame. I think there was one other slight change, but I can't remember what it was. Again, not my, not the mold that I spend a ton of time on really really beautiful shading i actually have quite a few clydesdale stallions just because they speak to you sometimes right um, and this one has beautiful shading and is in lovely condition so you can see when the painter was doing the airbrushing they hit it from the back so it's highlighting the muscles on the shoulder and the hip really giving the model a very attractive look the only thing that th so the airbrush artist was amazing but um, the poor eye painter was on a Friday and decided to give him a little bit of an Egyptian look. So he's actually got black, like streaked all the way back and then up into his front of his eyeball. So this side, mm, not so nice, but this side, he's really pretty. So I still got a bunch of Clydesdale stallions, but this is the, the end of kind of the early era, the bays and the glossy gray dapples um, and that's kind of the era when Briar was doing long runs. So horses would be produced in the same color for a long period of time. Then we get into the 80s. Um, and if you know your Briar history, that's when they started to pick up on the special runs. Um, so now we got three that I'm not entirely sure about, but I'll make my best guess. This guy looks like, I th think this one was a special run for the Sears Holiday Catalog. I think he came, I think this one was in a set called like Drafters Great and Small and I think he came with a little bit. The little bits were introduced in the 80s. So I'm gonna say this is probably a mid to late 80s special run. Um, really nice dark headed silver um, roan with a bald face, yellow and blue bobs, and a yellow tail. Um, they did make lots of special runs on these guys and the Belgians, and a lot of times the bob color is what helps you determine. Um, so dark-headed um, roans aren't my favorite color, but he is nice. I like him. He's got a very nice metallic sheen to him, and I I think this was this will be a factory goof. So we've been having terrible factory goofs 
all the time we've had briars. Um, something happened to him right here. He has some excess plastic. So like as he came out of the mold, he got some plastic and he didn't get wiped down in the wipe down phase with the acetone. Um, so he has a big boo-boo, but it's under the paint. So this is this is a factory boo-boo. Other than that, he's in really nice condition. Um, no rubs to his paint or finish, no breaks. And a lot of these guys will be, especially the earlier guys, will be missing bobs. Um, he does not have any of his bobs missing, so he's in nice condition. Then we have this guy. And I think, I think, I think, I think, I think, I think he was a regular run because he doesn't like jump out at me and I, I didn't pay a lot of attention to all of the regular runs back in the day but I did try and pay attention to what was going on in the catalogs and the Christmas catalogs and special runs and stuff so this was probably a regular run really nice dark mahogany bay I'd say with gold and blue bobs so these two guys um, I mean they look substantially similar but they're all so different. This guy's obviously a lot lighter, but we've got yellow and gold bobs, or yellow and blue and gold and blue bobs. Um, and his tail is, ribbon is painted in blue. This guy's in yellow. Um, no other interesting signatures or anything. So I'm gonna say he was a regular run. Um, just knowing my eras, he's probably early 90s, 92, 94, I could be off. But he just kind of has that paint quality look. He doesn't have any eye whites. Nothing else really stands out. He's just kind of a, a stenciled blaze. And he's nicely painted. Again, no flaws, no rubs. So good condition. And then our last Clydesdale Stallion. Um, now this guy, I believe, is Laddie 2. This guy caused a lot of drama back when he was released because the 1993 Briarfest had a Clydesdale stallion named Grayingham's Lucky Lad as its celebration model. Um, like a year or two later, they released this guy who is really, really, really close. I mean, if you put them next to each other, you could see the difference. The one thing that stands out to me is this guy has much higher white the white comes up on his body um, on both sides fairly substantially, whereas the original Grayingham's Lucky Lad had white legs and a little bit of white on his belly, but it definitely didn't come up onto his body. I think the original Laddie didn't have as big of a face, but he did have red and white bobs, but I think they had a little more detail to them, like they brought down the bob paint a little bit really really similar so there was a lot of discussion back in the Haynet days if Haynet was around back then I think it was um, about how Laddie a regular run Laddie 2 was going to impact the collectability of the original Grangham's Lucky Lad um, so it was an interesting discussion just thought I'd tell you about it he also is one of the few Clydesdale stallions to get his forelock ribbon painted he actually has a ribbon molded onto his forelock, but you will almost never see it painted. Only like two or three of the runs will have that painted. Um, he also has a red and white bow, and then his ribbons that coming down are also red and white. Um, so, so little minor differences, but if you weren't like heavily into them, you could, it would take you a while. You wouldn't know the difference between the two releases. Um, this guy was a regular run for a couple of years. At that time, I think they were doing two, three years on their regular runs. So that was probably more history than you needed. But this mold's been around a long time. And there are a lot of really heavy collectors that love them. I like them. They're fun. Like I said, I've got a bunch on my shelves. So hope you enjoyed that. And join me next week. We'll see what I find to talk about next week. Thank you.